on December 17, 1903, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, Orville Wright and his brother, Wilbur, who are also known as the Wright brothers, introduced the world's first successful airplane. The plane was able to fly 120 feet for 12 seconds. Although the Wright brothers were not the first to build and fly experimental aircraft, they however were the first to make the first powered flight in a heavier than air machine. In 1914, Glenn Curtis designed a plane that could take off and land on water. The same year, Thomas B. Neust built a flying boat to initiate air service across Tampa Bay. This was called St. Petersburg Tampa Air Boat Line. During this era, commercial aviation was very slow to catch on with the general public, most of whom were afraid to ride planes. Not only that, the military value of an aircraft was quickly recognized and production quickly increased. The results? More powerful engines, enabling aircraft to reach a speed up to 130 miles per hour, which made the building of larger aircrafts possible. However, the war was very bad for commercial aviation in many ways. By the end of the war, there was a large surplus of planes that the demand for new production was non-existent, forcing many planes builders to shut down. In 1926, the Air Commerce Act authorized the Secretary of Commerce to designate air routes, to develop air navigation systems, to license pilots and aircraft, and to investigate accidents. This act brought the government into commercial aviation as a regulator of the private airlines. For the airlines to attract passengers away from the railroads, they needed larger and faster planes. Aircraft builders responded to the challenge. In fact, there were so many improvements to aircraft in the 1930s that many believe it was the most innovative period in aviation history. The DC-3, also called the plane that changed the world, was the first aircraft to enable airlines to make money carrying passengers. By 1936, it was the dominant plane in the United States. 